Hello everybody, my name is Nihil and today I am back for you with another installment in my Hammer tutorial series. Now this is part two of the custom assets tutorial series. So last week we talked about how to bring a custom texture into your Hammer CSGO or whatever else map. Now, today, we are going to talk about how do we actually bring a complete custom prop, a custom model, into our map. And of course, this is just so cool if you're able to do this, if you know how to get or make models, or if you have friends that can make them for you, you can bring them into your map and can really just give it a much better, cooler, more unique look and uh, you're able to do things that you weren't able to do before. So anyways, I've modeled a, a crate here that I want to put into my map. And I will show you how to do that from beginning to end. Um, of course, uh, this is 3D Studio Max, and I know that not everybody has access to 3D Studio Max. I'm a student, I have access. But some people, either they don't have it or they don't like it. So you can use Maya, you could use Blender, you could use anything else. So while there are ways to get it right into the source engine from Max, for this tutorial I wanted to use Blender because a Blender is free. Everybody can download Blender, okay? And so if we know how to bring our models from Blender into source, uh, we can use any other program and just use Blender as an intermediary. So we, we, we will do that today. And I will show you that right away here. Uh, so again, I've done a little paint sketch here like I like to do uh, in general all the time. And uh, so this is how this works. So you can use Max or you can use Maya or you can use any other modeling program like Soft Image XSI or whatever. Um, and uh, as long as that exports into, say, 3DS, which all of these programs do, or FBX or anything else, you can do that. And then you can download and open Blender and just use that to continue the workflow, basically. And I've put a little dashed line around this step because, of course, if you already are a Blender user, if you already know how to use Blender, uh, you're good to go anyways. So I've just exported this as a 3DS. So just like always, let's take a look here at our folders that we are going to work with today. Again, if you haven't seen my last week's tutorial, please do check that out because I already explained a couple of concepts that are just going to help you understand this. Uh, so on the left side, again, I have my work folder that is on my e hard drive, CSGO maps, DE tutorial, uh, right here where I have all the, the, um, the instances and I've got my custom texture stuff going on. But I've also made a folder called props you can you, you can call that whatever you want and in here i i have given the model a name i've called it i'm calling it corrosive crate okay um and in here i have a bunch of files so i've exported this dot 3ds file from 3d studio max just save as 3ds file right and you could use again you could use any other program to do this step that's the cool part about this tutorial that everybody can use it um and then we are going to go into blender here and in here uh it creates a bunch of things for us uh, a camera a light source and a cube and uh, we can leave those things in here except for the cube so i'm just gonna hit delete and click delete and then it actually uh, removes the cube from the scene. Everything else can stay the same. That's perfectly fine. The first thing I want to do is I want to hit File, Import 3DS. And then in here, uh, under E, CSGO Maps, DE Tutorial, Props, Corrosive Crate, what we have is, that's our work folder that we already talked about, we have Corrosive Crate.3DS. That's what I exported from uh, 3D Studio Max. So I can just double click that and that brings in the cube. So that's cool. Um, so now we have that in Blender, it's pretty much already time to export it out as an SMD. But before we do that, there's a couple of things we want to check. So first of all, and I'm not a really much of a Blender user, but um, you know, ultimately it doesn't really matter too, too much. What we've got here is our box 03, that's this object. But if we do go to our, um, to this third little icon here, um, the scene icon, I guess, I don't know what to call that. Under units, you want to click metric. Okay, um, and that way a meter in Blender is equal to one unit of scale in Hammer. So 
this is a crate. This is supposed to be sort of a medium-sized crate. So if I hit Shift A and under Mesh and go Cube, that creates a cube for us. But we can then change the radius because we want to make sure that we have the right scale. So a radius for a cube is kind of weird, but just think of it as sort of like a, the way it works in a, in a sphere, uh, the radius or in a circle. It's the same idea. So if we want the cube to be, uh, to, to, to be about 64 units high, we would say radius 32. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to hit 26. Okay, now we have a giant cube. Um, now we can actually right click this cube right here, this actual model, and we can actually hit S and just sort of scale that up, okay, to the right scale. So hit S again and just make it as big as the cube, roughly. And that's uh, basically the way we do this in order to make sure that we do have the right scale. So right now it's roughly at a scale of, you know, 60 units from any point to the next one so that's pretty good for counter-strike because if you remember my very first tutorial uh, about 60 64 units of, of height is where players can still duck behind but they they can jump over as well and stuff like that uh, okay so we've got the scale sorted out and then um, what we need to do is one more thing if you want uh, textures which you probably want to use uh, you can actually click this little plus icon here and then click this plus icon here and then here, okay, double click that and set this to whatever your texture file is going to be later on. In this case, I'm going to call it corrosive underscore create, just like the model itself. And now that you've set all this up, now it is time to export this as an SMD file for the source engine. Um, and for this, you need a tool, but that's also free, thankfully, which is called the Source Engine Export Tool. And there's a link in the video description where you can download that. And you should know that not only is this free, but it also comes with a README file um, that tells you exactly what you need to do to install this, which is, I'm not going to show you that to save a little bit of time, but it's super simple. It's just copying two to three files or something. It's very very easy no problems and then just restart blender and it's right here so again in the same dialog th third icon here or the scene icon here we have source engine export the first thing we need to do is set the export path and we can set this to anything i'm just going to use my work folder again again csgo maps de tutorial props corrosive crate that is simply this folder right here uh, so we're just going to hit accept. And then we need to, need to turn on SMD. We don't want a DMX file, we want an SMD file. And then under engine path, we need to tell it the engine path. For me, that is C program file, Steam, Steam apps, common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive slash CSGO. And for you, that could very well be the same path, or it could be a different hard drive or wherever you decided to install CSGO and Steam, basically. That's pretty much the folder that you need to select but make sure it is counter-strike global offensive slash csgo this needs to be the folder that you select here and then you hit accept and that's everything you don't need to change anything else you can just hit export and then click on the uh, box 03 this is the name of my box here um, just don't try to do a scene export that we don't need. Just box03.smd. Click it, and it tells you that it basically instantly exported a single file. And of course, if we look into this right now, there we go. That's the file that we just successfully exported. Since this is also still called box03, I'm just going to hit F2 to rename this into corrosive crate. Um, we already have that file because I already did this, so let me just quickly get rid of this file and hit rename this again to corrosive crate. Let's take a look back at our workflow. So at this point, we have already done this. We have done this step. Now, the next step is to take the SMD and actually compile it because uh, models also need to be compiled uh, for the source engine. And we will get an MDL file out of that a model file and also plus three that's just to say that there's also three more files a physics file and two other files um, that we also need um, but this compiler is called studio mdl or studio model and i'll show you how we can do that in just a second but there's also a q script that is just uh, that gives us just a bunch of parameters that we also need to create which is just a text file and uh, both of these are actually text files 
So uh, we need to use the SMD that we already generated and then we need to make the QC file as well and then bring that all into this studio model uh, thing, run that and that will export the MDL, the model file. So let us take a look at our folders again. And um, I've already prepared a studio MDL batch file. Um, the way to do that is you just right click new and then you just generate a text document and you open the text document and you put this in and you find this in the video description as always, of course. And right here, uh, there's this folder and you need to possibly adapt this again. This is on my system. It's C program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and then bin slash studio model. Um, that's always going to be the same, but you need to point it to your CSGO folder, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, okay? Make sure that is the right folder name. And the same thing goes for this here. Again, change it to the right folder name on your system. It might be the same, might be a different one. Then save this out and make sure that it has the file extension .bat. Make sure that Windows displays the file extensions. Um, watch my previous tutorial as well, where I uh, talk about this in a little bit more detail. Um, and you can find that in the playlist, of course, on YouTube. So... We have that set up. That's pretty simple. The next thing we mentioned in the paint document was the QC script. So again, make another new text file and call it QC script and open it up. And I've already associated .qc with notepad here. And you can use, again, any other notepad text editor as well. And then copy and paste this into it. And again, this is in the video description. Um, and you need to adapt this as well. So first of all, before we check that out, let's also take a look at the right folder. We haven't talked about this one yet. This is the game folder. So this is, again, C, program file, Steam, Steam apps, common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive slash CSGO. That is called the game folder, okay? So the very first thing we do is under models. Here's a folder models. You can open that up and it should look something like that. Um, I've made a new folder called DE Tutorial. You can name that whatever you want, but I'd suggest making a folder for your new map. And this is empty right now, um, but this is where we want the output to go. So um, starting from the game folder CSGO slash models, you need to put model name and then the folder, I called it DE tutorial, and then slash corrosive crate or whatever else you want the model to be called. In my case, it's all called corrosive crate. Um, and then model body corrosive crate.smd, that is the file name of your uh, output from Blender. So this is called corrosive crate.smd in the left hand side. So here we put corrosive crate.smd. Then we're only going to make a static prop right now, so put in dollar sign static prop. And then you need the folder a path to your materials um, folder. So in our game folder, uh, CSGO here, we have a, a materials folder and a models folder. Under materials, we have another folder called models. And this is where the materials go that are used by your props. So in here, I've made another folder called DE Tutorial. And in here, we have a VMT and a VTF file. If you want to know how to make these, you need to watch my first video in this series, which is the previous video. And we go over how to make these files in that video. But all you need to know is I've created a VMT text file. It's just a single, simple base texture. Um, and it has that folder name uh, from materials. It is uh, starting in materials. It is models, DE tutorial, corrosive crate. VTF. And this is just my texture file converted into a VTF um, that we talked about, uh, uh, you know, last week, basically. Um, so that's set up. But here on the left side, that's our QC script again. We need to make sure that this is all set up. So uh, the uh, materials folder, so starting from materials again, is models DE tutorial. This is where our files are in, our VMT and our VTF texture files are in. So that's the folder that we put in here. And the surface prop. Now this is the name of your texture file, but also the file, um, remember when we were in Blender, we renamed the, uh, the, the, the material. Uh, 
and this needs to be the same name. This is very important. The Blender material name, uh, which is on your screen right now, needs to be the same name as the VMT file. And the VTF can have a different name, but then in here you need to use the right name for the VTF. But I just put them all as corrosive crate, which makes it a bit easier. And then we have two more uh, lines in here, which is just for your animations, but we don't have any, so we don't use that. And for your collision model, which this is a simple model, so we're just going to use the model itself. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but for now, for starting out, this should be enough. Further information is always in the Valve documentation. So this is our QC script.qc file. This is just a text file with the file extension of um, QC. So in here, we've got .qc. Make sure it is called .qc and not .txt or something. Now, we have everything set up. So what you do is you drag and drop the QC file into the studio model.bat file. And this brings up this here. And this is the compile process, similar to how Hammer compiles your BSP maps. And uh, it has a bunch of warnings here, but it, it, I found out that in practice, this doesn't seem to be a, a very big uh, problem because everything exports just fine. So what has this done? Well, on the right side in our game folder, let's go to CSGO, let's go to models, let's go to DE tutorial, and this is what happened. This was previously empty, of course, if you remember, and now we have our model file and our plus three, that is the random sort of miscellaneous files that it also outputs. We have that all in here. Now, the first thing I would like you to do is uh, go ahead and start your SDK up just like this, and open the model viewer, because this is pretty nice to, to actually debug your models. So opening this and load model, and this will put it into the models folder of your game, and DE tutorial, corrosive crate, and just make sure that everything worked. If this is black, that means there was an issue, and you can click model here, and it'll tell you that there was an error loading or finding the VMT files. Make sure that your QC script is set up correctly. Make sure that your VMT file is set up correctly. And that way, you can actually um, make sure that everything is good before you're going to be bothering about putting anything into Hammer or anything like that, before you have to worry about that. So with this checking out, that looks good. This looks like the model model that we made in 3ds Max. Now it is time to go ahead and also open Hammer. And it is time to actually put this into uh, the map and then take a look at it. And I'm going to open my hallway instance. And right here, we've got a nice little corner here. And we'll just put in a prop static, just hit Alt Enter, uh, World Model. And now here, DE Tutorial is a new folder in the model files. So you can click that. And it has our corrosive crate. Beautiful. Uh, we'll double click that, apply. And there we go. That is our prop. So I'm just going to position that sort of, I don't know, just put two of them in here, I guess. Why not? There we go. Okay, cool. And I'm just going to compile this and check it out in-game. All right, and there we are. That's our crates in our map. Custom models. Uh, looks great. It's actually a 2K texture. It's much too big. Looks great, uh, even in source, in my opinion. Great texture quality. But it costs a lot of resources, so make, make your textures a little bit smaller. But I've already talked about textures anyways. Yeah, and it works just fine. So again, this was the second installment. Uh, the third installment is going to be talking about how to actually make sure that people can play this over the internet. Because right now, only your local version on your hard drive of CSGO has your custom textures and your custom models. Everybody else doesn't have them. So next time, we are going to talk about how to actually embed these files into the BSP file itself so that when people play your map on the Steam Workshop or wherever, Forever, they will have all the required files uh, along with your map. So that's the final step to finalize your map. But for now, you know how to do materials, you know how to do custom models, and you can use this to make your map look excellent and run excellently well on your machine. And then when the time comes and the time is right, you just embed all of your data into your map and then you can ship it basically. You can put it on Steam, everybody can play it. Anyways, so uh, until next time, my name has been Nihil. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and bye-bye.